Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So let's solve this question, triangle, pretty simple, but you definitely need an IQ of at least 130 if you wanna be able to solve this problem. Just kidding. With enough practice, an IQ of 90 is more than enough. And don't forget to like the video, it supports the channel a lot. So this is presented as a pretty simple problem. We're given a triangle array and we want to return the minimum path sum from the top to the bottom. So what is a triangle array? It's a nested array, right? So we have one array, a second array, a third array, and a fourth array. And they tell us that the minimum path sum from top to bottom is 11. We have a two as the first one, a three from the second one, a five from the third one, and a one from the last one. So that's the minimum path sum when we're going from the top to the bottom. But this is a nested array. How do we even visualize that? So this is what we're given, right? We're gi I'm, I rewrote this, right? So it's a little easier to visualize. We're given a list of arrays where the first array is dimension one. This one has two elements, this has three elements, and this has four elements. But even this, we can redraw this to make it a lot easier to understand. Since we're looking for the minimum path sum why not draw this similar to a tree? So I redrew this as a tree of some kind, right? Like we can see that for two, it has a pointer to both of these children, right? Like both of the nodes at the, at the lower level. But it's not a true like binary search tree, right? Like look, three has access to six and five but four also has access to the five. Why did we do it like this? Why did I draw it like this? Well, when you look in the instructions, they say for each step, right, we're trying to get the minimum path sum from top to bottom, and they say for each step we take, you can only move to an adjacent number on the row below. So any adjacent number. So while this is similar to a tree, it's not exactly equal to a binary search tree, but it's similar enough that we can use that to our advantage. So we know from the example that from starting here that this is the minimum path sum from top to bottom. And the sum happens to be 11. But how can we find it? Well, one way is recursively, right? We know we have to include two, but am I gonna go left or am I gonna go right? Even though three is smaller, it's not necessarily true that this is gonna guarantee the smallest path. Because what if we have a four here, but what if this was a zero and this was a zero? In that case, we would have this as the minimum path. So one way to do this is recursively, right? Like depth first search first, find the minimum path sum from here and the minimum path sum from here, right? Sub problem territory. We know for three, we can more easily do that sub problem, right? Like, so now from three, we're gonna do the exact same thing. Recursively, we're gonna do a sub problem, right? So now I wanna know what's the minimum path sum containing the six and the minimum path sum containing the five. And so we can repeat that recursively, continue to do sub problems until we get to the base case. So for three, I wanna know what's the minimum path sum I can get for each of its children. So for six and five, what's the minimum path sum we can get? And we see that six is not done yet. It has a couple children of its own. So we got to repeat that process. What's the minimum path sum for four and for one? Now, finally, we get to the base case. It has no children, right? So, so we can consider its children to essentially be zero. So then what's the minimum path sum for four? It's just four. This is the base case. 
So I'm just gonna mark that right here. So we know the minimum path sum for this is four. Now we can repeat the same thing for this. It's also a base case. These are zero, so I'm just gonna put a little one here, though it's probably not necessary because we see these values anyway. So now, since we did this recursively, we gotta go back up to our parent, which is six. So for this six, I want the minimum path sum. So am I gonna do six plus one, or am I gonna do six plus four? Clearly this one is smaller, so we're gonna say the minimum path sum for six is seven. So I'm gonna mark that right here. We know that the minimum path sum for this six is seven. And we're gonna repeat, we're gonna go back up to our parent three. Now for three, we know that the left path is gonna be three plus seven. But what about the right path over here? Well, we didn't compute it yet because we never looked over here. We never looked at this eight. We already visited the one over here, so that's repeated work. We don't have to do that. But this eight, we know it doesn't have any children, right? So we're done with it. We can mark it as an eight, it's a base case. And then when we go back up to this five, we can see clearly that the minimum path is five plus one, not five plus eight. So next to this, I'm gonna mark the minimum path as six. So it's getting a little messy, but I hope it's still a little bit readable. So remember what we were trying to do, right? This three plus seven comes from here. That's one of our choices. The other choice we have is clearly a three plus six now, right? So which of these is smaller? Clearly the bottom, clearly this one, right? Three plus six is nine. So next to our three, we can mark the minimum path sum as being nine. Now we can finally go back up to our root node. We can go up to the two. And now we wanna know what's the minimum path sum of this starting at this two because that's what we were trying to get originally, right? So we have one choice. If we go left, the minimum path sum is gonna be two plus nine. But what about the right choice? Now, I can show you how to, you know, we can repeat the process that we just did over here, but we know that the solution is on the left side, but you know, just for visual purposes, it's obvious looking at the picture, the minimum path sum from this four would be going down here to five and six, which is gonna be 10. So our choice is two plus nine or two plus 10. We know two plus nine is 11, which is smaller. So this is our minimum path sum. So we just did it recursively, but is there an easier way to do it? We know that the base case for all of these is they have z children as zero basically, right? So let's actually do the dynamic programming solution. Let's start at the bottom and work our way up. So for four, I know the minimum path sum is four. For one, it's one. For eight, it's eight. For three, it's three. Now let's work our way up. So at six, all I have to do is take the minimum of my two children, right? So compare four and one. I know that four is greater than one, right? Four is greater than one. So we want the smaller element. So we do six plus one is seven. Let's repeat that for five. So I have two children, one and eight. I know that eight is greater than one. So I'm gonna do five plus one, which is six. And last but not least, in this row, we're gonna look at four. We know eight is greater than three. So we're gonna do four plus three, which is seven. So now let's work our way up to the next row. We wanna look at three. What's the minimum path sum with three? Well, seven is greater than six, right? So we want six, we're gonna do three plus six is nine. Repeat that for four. We see that seven, we have a seven on the right, we have a six on the left, 
six is smaller, we're gonna do four plus six, which is 10. And now we get to two, the left is nine, right is 10, we're gonna do two plus nine is 11. So our solution is 11. So that's the dynamic programming algorithm. The main thing to notice about the dynamic programming solution is that for this row, we only need the bottom row, which is only zeros, right? And for this row, we only need to use this row. So if we wanna compute this row, we only need the bottom row. Similarly, if we want to compute the second row, we only need to use this row. And then to compute the last one, we only need this row. So we only need to save one row at a time. So that tells us that the memory complexity is gonna be big O of N, where N is the number of rows that we have in our input. Now the time complexity, I think is roughly O N squared because that's roughly the number of elements that we have in our input. So the code is actually even simpler than you might expect because we're doing the dynamic programming solution. So I'm gonna have DP, this is like the bottom row that we're gonna keep track of. Remember, we only need to keep track of one row and we're gonna fill it with zeros. Now, how long is it gonna be? It's gonna be the length of the bottom row plus one. And the reason is because we know that every row is get every row below increases by one. Now we want to iterate through each row in the input, and we want to do that in reverse order. So in Python, we can do it like this. So we just want to reverse triangle and then iterate through it. Now I want to go through every single value in this row. In Python, I'm gonna do it like this. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna enumerate this, enumerate this row so we can access the index and the value at the same time. So remember how DP contains the row below. So we want the minimum of the two children of I. We can get that with DP of I and DP of I plus one, and then just take the minimum of it. So we wanna take the minimum of the children and then add that to N, which is the value that we're looking at right now. And we also want to put this in the next row so we can, we can actually overwrite DP of I because we're doing it in such an order that we'll never need to use this value, this original value again. So all we're doing here is getting the minimum path sum from this value, which is at this index in this row. We're, we're looping through every row, every value, getting the minimum path sum. So literally that's it, we're done. What can we return? Well, we want the minimum path sum from the root. So by the time this is done executing, we will have the minimum path sum stored in the first index of this row. So just to visualize it, I'm just gonna show you really quickly what the algorithm is gonna do. So and remember initially, we're gonna have all zeros and notice how we have five of them because that's because in the bottom row, we have four values and we're just gonna add one. So next for four, we're gonna take the minimum of these two, add it to four. So next we would replace this zero with a four, we would replace this one, this zero with a one, we would replace this with an eight, replace this with a three. And then we don't have to look at this row ever again. Next, we would replace this four with a seven, we would replace this one with a six, we would replace this eight with a 12, and then we're done with this row, we don't have to look at it again. Three values here, we have three values here. So next we would replace this seven with a nine. We're gonna replace this six with a 10. And now we took these two values and now we have them here. We don't even need this anymore, but it's gonna be stored in the array regardless. We don't even care about it. We never have to look at these again. We just have one left. And since this nine is the smallest, we are gonna end up with an 11 over here. 
and that's what we're going to end up returning. That's why we return the value at the zeroth index. So I hope this was helpful. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed. It supports the channel a lot, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.